Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys had a good Halloween. I know my parents did. They've been decorating like this for the past 20 years. My dad just made the cemetery sign um, and just been slowly adding to the collection of uh, making or enhancing stuff that he has uh, bought over the years. Been doing this about 20 years now and um, everyone loves it around here and around the coast Halloween now. So I figured just include this a little bit just to show you guys kind of random stuff that we're kind of into but uh, before we jump into the video I was gonna have this a first drive video but I decided to push that back to next week just because there's so much footage here so um, it's a back enjoy and uh, hope you guys like the episode now before I go ahead and drop in the engine there's a few things I have to do before I want to put it in the car mainly this is all unprotected the surface that I painted it's been sitting here for a couple months now so everything's flashed off so I don't have to worry about anything being trapped when I go coating this and everything but I'm gonna be using a product called armor shield and this is just a ceramic coating that's really easy to apply and I'm gonna be coating the whole subframe firewall because everything's really porous right now and it just accepts any any dust or grit so what this coating is gonna do is just repel all that dirt uh, they are, of course they're not sponsoring me or anything so just like using their products again. Now I'm gonna to try to use one kit for the whole subframe. That includes the underneath and the firewall. So first I'm gonna prep the area and just clean all the dust and everything that's hanging down there for me stepping in and out of the engine bay on the cradle there. And I'm gonna be using some glass cleaner. So just some foaming glass cleaner, which is you can just get from any kind of auto body store. And then after that, I'm gonna be using some uh, rubbing alcohol. Probably on the subframe, I don't know if I'm going to be using the rubbing alcohol on that. I have to t test the inconspicuous area to see how the alcohol interacts on that section there. So um, you can put this on a matte finish, just like the firewall is, and it won't disrupt what it looks like. It'll just morph to whatever the color is currently, including the same sheen. About 70 degrees out right now, so I'm going to wait about three minutes in dry time. And you have to be, that's the only thing you have to really worry about besides the prep. You have to really watch the dry time on this. So three minutes wipe it off we're working with little sections at a time first it's going to be a little bit too hard to get off so let me do that now start cleaning it and show you guys what it looks like We've all been waiting for. Let's hook this up. Got to hook the bell housing up to it, and then I'm going to do the method of putting the transmission in after and not dropping in with the engine. Thank you. 
So I have all my linkage connected and adjusted new um, pit packs and lubricated appropriately on everything. New spring clips on every one of them. And I have my reverse lockout, which is right here. I also have this clutch uh, bracket adjusted correctly with the correct amount of play in it. Uh, what you do is just loosen that bolt and twist it. There's a area here that you're supposed to use for a gauge hole up right here. I didn't really have a chance to use that, so what I did was just adjust it all the way out until there was no slack and turned it in twice. And that way, I have the right amount of clutch travel. All new bolts on everything, of course. Got the headers all in. Those are a pain in the button itself. So exhaust, fuel tank, and then um, last bit of plumbing and stuff. I am not running a return line on here, so I just left this for future use if someone wants to use that. Or if I want to use that with a different carburetor with a return, I could just put a rubber line, connect it up, and I did run it all the way in the front of the car as well. I have the new um, rubber lines all installed and I uh, have to do the parking brake cable as well, but it's coming along pretty nice right now. Um, let me show you what the clutch looks like up here. So I'm not gonna be using, I just don't like the feel of this shifter, but I just put it on just uh, to get me started here. But anyway, I have, here's the clutch. So you can see a little bit of uh, play right there until it hits when you're able to push it down. The um, gas pedal is working nice. I have the return spring on that. Um, I attached the other side of this oil line for the gauge. Here's what the radiator end up looking like. Very nice paint so far, as long as it's durable. I've never used this personally before, but so far it looks like it's very you know, nice and I tried to scrape it off. It's not flaking or anything. I just used acetone to wipe it down and scuff it like you saw in another video or previously. So this is all set to be in the car. I think now I'm just gonna install the exhaust and then I'll put the fuel tank in. I've been waiting to install the exhaust uh, for whatever reason. I, I, for some reason, just don't feel like being under the car anymore, but let's just get that done now. Do the wiring and then maybe we'll just do a quick test fire and then hook up everything for coolant and everything like that. So do the finishing touches and maybe we'll be on the home stretch here pretty soon. I was laying out this exhaust that I got, which by the way is Magnaflow's two and a half inch X-pipe exhaust system for F-body uh, Camaros. And I didn't realize that it didn't come with these front reducers for the header. So what I had to do last night is hurry up one to the local auto parts store and grab just a generic coupler. And this is a three inch to two and a half inch. So I will have to mock everything up and then weld on um, the pipe. So I'll have to temporary, temporarily test fit everything before and then just tack this on and then I can do a nice weld around. And then I'll probably Cerakote to where the weld penetrated to just because that's gonna mess with the integrity of the stainless steel. And then um, that way it won't rust. Now, before I do that, I was thinking, well, I should probably put in some gear oil in the transmission while I have more space. And I'm using this little generic pumper that I got from Amazon at the time, a couple years ago. So I'm gonna put this, this is the gear oil I'm using, 85W90. It's called STA lube, stall lube, gear oil. And I'll be putting that in the transmission and in the rear diff. So let me do that now. Then I'll start test fitting everything and see how everything starts to turn out. All right, so after literally all day of screwing with this exhaust, I finally have it set up and really nice. And I have to, it's just all in place by jack stands and various clamps and stuff. But see, I have the jack stand all nice and planted on this side. This one is on this side at the same spacer in between each 
section to space it out and the depth or the drop I should say is the same too and what took me so long I can't use for whatever reason these these aren't going to line up with the factory hanger locations so what I had to do was pretty much work from the tail section back and keep placing these jack stands all over the place until I found the right position and then lock it down with the clamps make sure everything's all even all tucked up and I if they would have just labeled right and left on the system then I would have knew how to put these on but I was going over this the one way and then I didn't know you had to go around this way I was putting it on this other side rather than on this side and it was just a big old fun mess but as long as it stays like this all I have to do now is start uh, making my hanger locations for the rear tailpipe section which one will be right over here another one will be right over there I'm gonna weld right to the pipe tack it on there take it all apart weld it off really nice and then um, the last section which this is what I did first and which was my mistake was this pipe over here that goes to the header so i what i did i took this off so i took that off that i put on which was right over here and then this is how much i have to cut off which is a lot so right where this band clamp is I cut this off and then i can then weld on to there with the header flange area bolt it on to this front section right here and then everything should be able to be tightened down hopefully so you can see just how nice and level i got that but it's how it should be because i took about six or seven hours to do this trying to figure it out what to do the directions are absolutely terrible and i couldn't find any pictures online how to do it so this is all the pictures it just tells you what um, each pipe what order they should go in and then this factory location here which I did not have that so that was an absolute not help at all to anything but we'll see how it sounds because Magnaflow always sounds great that's why I put up with installing it and X pipe should sound really good too so I gotta figure out how to cut this pipe even weld it uh, bolt it on place take it all apart and then I should be able to weld each bracket on and then be done with it. Put it all back together and be done. And then the fuel tank, and then I can start it. Last pipe I have to weld. I did have to do the passenger or the driver's side pipe, so I had to bend this down a little bit like that, and then add a filler piece in here, like I did to this one. I added a section here so I could then push it out further, and the further you push it out, the more this way it goes, meaning it lines up with that a lot better. And then I just bolted this on, bent it down, and then filled in the gap like I'm about to do on this other side. And this one's requiring the same thing. I don't know what happened with this kit, but I think that uh, they sent me the wrong brackets and the hangers. I don't know. But I used what they had and cut that about six inches off and then just welded it right on there for the tailpipe. Tailpipe is all nice and tucked up. Has at least half an inch of clearance on everything. And I did the same to the other side over there. I'll Cerakote all the joints that I welded on this one and that other pipe, take them off, Cerakote them inside and out. That way they won't rust because I wasn't using stainless steel made wire and I just don't have that special gas blend and I'm not about to go out and buy it just to do this exhaust. So I'll Cerakote it and that'll, it won't rust ever. It'll also help hold in all the heat as well. So, which is important because these two pipes run underneath the um, passenger and driver's side floorboards. All right guys, got in a new fuel sending unit. Um, you have the lines for the EVAP lines all ran and on that side as well. The canister is not going back in this car, so I am capping off where that location is supposed to be routed. 
which goes from the whole driver's side up to where that yellow um, vacuum cap is up there. I also have all the straps hung, brand new straps for the fuel tank. And I should be able to go ahead and start slotting this in. So I have everything temporarily hooked up. The wiring is a mess, but I had to just leave it like that until I decide everything is working correctly. I'm gonna hurry up and hook up the radiator. And I had to mess with the starter a little bit. There's two different bolts that are in line. Um, I had to move it over to the left a little bit because it wasn't engaging the starter. Or uh, the flywheel wasn't engaging to the starter because it was the 168 tooth flywheel. So I moved it over two bolts. Now it's engaging. Uh, I'm gonna prime the engine now, make sure that the oil pressure is good with it before I put gas in it. There we go. Okay, so it's primed right now throw this belt on real quick too i almost forgot about that for the alternator i'm not going to run it too long but just enough to um, see how it sounds and everything the exhaust is all hooked up don't know if i showed you guys that or not yet but after two and a half days of messing with that everything's all tucked up nice everything's all cerakoted on the front here and hopefully don't have any leaks i'm just gonna run it for like a minute because I don't have apparently any of the coolant lines that I thought I ordered. I don't know where they disappeared to. Oh. Are you going to put it in the gas tank? Heck yeah. Well, I thought you were going to run, just run it through the car burner. I'm not messing around. You can see if anything's leaking on the bottom. Yeah. Can you hand him that flashlight that's hanging up, please, man? I'm only going to put a couple down on there. What's that? That's burnt out there, so she's gonna give you this other one. Did you repaint this? No, it just looks better. Oh, it underneath look there. It's pretty good. Yeah. The top side looked a lot worse. Yeah. That should be good enough. That's at least three gallons to put in there. Some terminal must be off. Oh, it, it probably pops the. I hate this. This starter has a. Um, Instead of having a screw on connector, it has a plug connector. Mm. Yeah, it popped off. See, look how stupid that is. I have to fix that. That's a plug connector. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, you pulled it when you pulled the wires. Yeah. yeah we... It right. doesn't screw on there. No, I had to change it to the plug style instead of the round type. Because oh, <laughs> that screwed it up. Can you uh, hit that choke open? Yeah, uh, you know what? I saw some kind of spark down here. I saw a spark down here. Gas isn't leaking, is it? No, it seemed like it sparked down here. Oh boy. 
what? A lot of fuel going up in there. What did it do? I, I don't know. I thought I saw a spark down here, but it might. I don't know if it's your own or what. Yeah, it's probably a reflection from that. Yeah. If anything, it would spark right there, right there. Yeah. Be, you know, I know. I, that's why I thought it was weird. Right? Still has to get some more gas up to it. But...